Hello and welcome to Discourses class. Um, I will be your instructor for this class. My name is Clint Schreiber and we, uh, this class, this course, will comprise what in our college is the full study of, of the life of Christ. We have Life of Christ, uh, the first semester of Life of Christ, second semester of Life of Christ. We have parables and then we have discourses and so this comprises one of four semesters which in our college would be uh, our complete study. There's a couple things I wanted to go over with you before you take the class. Uh, some details, uh, this is found in your course requirements and so when you open up the class you'll see uh, where there's a welcome video for um, Schoology if that's necessary for you and then there's some course requirements and it'll, it'll say start here. Um, and when you open that, you'll have a course requirements sheet. Uh, so if you'd like to uh, stop this, and, or, or perhaps you've seen the course requirements sheet, so if you'd like to stop this and print one of those off and look at it while I'm speaking, uh, that would be fine. <clears throat> you may have already looked at it, and this is going to be kind of a rehashing of what it says there. But I just want to go over those details to kind of make you, it so that you'll be prepared uh, to, for the class and, and the requirements um, for the class. And so this would obviously be if you're taking it for credit. So this is a study then of the discourses of our Lord. It is very, um, uh, at least fairly regimented uh, because we, we typically take, for the most part, uh, not, all, not all of them, sometimes we'll uh, spread a discourse over a period of, an, of a number of videos. But for, for a greater part, it's one discourse per video. So it's kind of nice that way because it's very uh, kind of regimented that way. Um, but uh, not, not so for all of them. For example, the Sermon on the Mount or the Olivet um, uh, Discourse. So we um, will start with the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, the <coughs> Bible is the only textbook for the class. You may have already seen that as well. You can look at some of the goals and objectives uh, that we would like to, um, to uh, achieve at the end of the class. The goal is the overall goal. The objectives are the way that I hope to reach that goal. Uh, and we do that by way of, um, of measuring that success uh, via quizzes and tests and papers. So part of the way that we do that is to have you write some papers to see if you've assimilated uh, some of the ways that we teach to be able to study uh, any, any given discourse. So your outside work then will be these papers. The first paper I'd like you to write is a two-page paper and it simply give, I want you to give the contextual setting for a parable. It would be best if it wasn't a, 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 a excuse me, or a discourse. It would be best if perhaps uh, the discourse wasn't one that we've uh, done in class. Now at that point, by the time uh, this is uh, due, I think the papers are um, maybe mid one is midway and then one is toward the end. So it would be best if you picked a discourse that we haven't done. You can go on to um, the internet and see a list of discourses and simply choose one, study it in the Bible, look through it, think about it, maybe write some notes down, and then simply concentrate on the contextual setting. We will go through these discourses. By that time, you'll have a number of opportunities to have gone through a discourse and to see how to study that uh, contextually. And then just to write a good, um, concise, and contextual setting on one of those discourses. So that's just a two-page paper. It's not really a research paper. It is simply a demonstration of your ability to be able to explain through properly uh, the context of a, of a discourse. And so then the second paper is, uh, is more of a a research paper and I, I want you simply to take a discourse and uh, select one of them and then uh, you'll do the contextual setting, the historical setting, and then the training value and interpretation. So uh, basically you'll, you'll, you'll do the contextual setting then any kind of history that may be around that. So you can use a Bible dictionary, you can use um, some internet sources, whatever the case may be. Be careful with some of those. You want to use the more conservative ones and uh, if you'd like to email me and ask me what some of those sources are, I'd be happy to list them for you or at least give you an, an idea. But Unger's Bible Dictionary is okay. Uh, some of the Bible Dictionaries will be fine and they'll give you a lot of the history. Uh, then some commentaries will also um, give some of the history of, of those discourses as well. Uh, you want to stick to uh, Edersheim is a very good author and, he'll, and he, uh, his uh, definitive work, Jesus the Messiah, uh, he, will be, he, will, he will explain through a lot of the discourses and he gives very rich uh, history, uh, extremely uh, detailed history, especially from a Jewish perspective. So his is an excellent resource for this, Albert, uh, Alfred Edersheim. 
And uh, so those are a couple of things that will help you then. And you'll be able to look and see some of the historical content there. And then I think I would just look at some commentaries, a decent number of commentaries. Um, and if there's something that you see in a commentary that you want to expand on in your paper, then you might look at another source to get some more information from there. But that's more of a research paper. And after all of that's done, then you'll give the uh, interpretation of the paper and then its training value. That is, what that's more of the practical part of it after having looked at it contextually and historically and then uh, looking at the in, or giving the interpretation of it then you would see how uh, you would explain how it would be best um, taught how it how it can help us then uh, as, as a training tool in the Christian life so and and the, and the way also that the Lord used it as a training tool and so what he was doing uh, what, what, what his point was how, what he was trying to teach through that discourse and of course, a lot of that's going to deal with the contextual setting, but you'll be able to give. And in there, of course, you can springboard to modern day, maybe some of the ways that it could be applied there. I think that'll be a very good uh, paper. It'll be actually pretty interesting, maybe lots of fun for you too, because you have the freedom to pick whatever discourse you like, and they'll be able to expand on that. Okay, then uh, you'll see as you go through the course uh, materials and work that you, you uh, read a portion of scripture where the... Um, Discourse is found, of course, and uh, then you'll look at the video. Uh, there's going to be a verse quiz that you'll need to write by hand and uh, or type, actually, um, and then submit that. And then you'll uh, uh, look through the video. And at the end, if it happens to be one video for one discourse, then you'll take a quiz on that discourse. It just so happens that the Sermon on the Mount, I believe, has three parts. So although you'll be uh, doing verse memorization, you won't take the quiz until the discourse uh, discourse is completed, but all of that is clearly placed uh, and, and ironed out for you in the uh, flow of the course uh, material. So you'll just do a step by step, do this one first and this one, and then when that's, once that's completed and it's submitted, then the option will be, will be open to you to be able to continue. So it's very simple, um, uh, the, the way that all of those things work. And then at the end of a certain number of units, we'll have a test, and the test will be based on, uh, of course, your um, uh, the verses there and there is a portion there that's going to let you know what verses you need to know for that test and then just study over some of the quizzes and your notes and things and you should be okay for, for, for the tests. Uh, the tests are worth 25%, the quiz is 35% and the papers, interestingly enough, are worth 40%. Now the reason I made those 40% was because that, that is, in this particular class, though, those uh, the, the idea of a contextual setting and then going through a discourse and completely explaining it this way uh, is very, a very, very strong uh, point in, in, in us reaching the goal of the class and it's one of the, one of the objectives. And so because it is so very uh, regimented that way and because the papers uh, actually display what uh, we're trying to teach through these discourses, that's why they're worth quite a bit of, uh, of a percentage for your grade. And so I do suggest that you put a good amount of time to those papers. Okay, so uh, basically your papers, uh, some verse quizzes, unit quizzes, and tests, and that's gonna comprise the course for you. I do hope you enjoy the class. Um, if you're taking it for credit, maybe some of the um, inclination would be to kind of get through it so you just can get the grade. And uh, I understand that I've been through lots of college, but at the same time, I hope that you'll just take time and look through it in a very mature fashion and uh, really try to get something out of it. And hopefully, uh, after this class, you'll have a real good handle on what the Lord uh, taught and how he taught it and, and uh, how we can look into the Bible and properly interpret those discourses. And uh, then hopefully at the end, yeah, you'll be able to teach other people also. So um, thank you again uh, for taking this class. I hope you enjoy it. And the Lord bless you as you work your way through it.